A new day has come and it might change everything. Even though I'm skeptical of the billionaire that wants to put a computer chip in your brain, I'm still optimistic. Welcome back, beautiful and amazing human beings. This is Ukradowski here of We Are Change.org, and we have some absolutely wild and bonkers news to get into today, especially when it comes to the future of big tech social media that, of course, will be changing drastically, most likely under the new leadership of Elon Musk. This says, of course, there's still a lot of things standing in the way from free speech. All of course as everything hangs in the balance of not just an energy crisis that was made that much worse just moments ago from the devastating announcement by OPEC, but also because of the devastating situation happening right now between the larger proxy war between the East and the West. We're going to be getting into that plus a lot more all on this independent media broadcast. The clip that we played in the beginning of this broadcast is by the very talented E. Nanaldo Trumpo, whose uh, username you could see uh, right here on Twitter under, of course, at Papi Trumpo. And if you want to guess who the second person in space was, well, you're just going to have to check out his Twitter page and his uh, demonstration of some people responding to this news. I think is absolutely perfect. This, as of course, the announcement came in. Elon Musk will be buying Twitter. In response to that, many people have seen hundreds, if not thousands, of their followers just be deleted. What's really happening behind the scenes? What's happening with the algorithm? Well, we don't know. We just know that there's a lot of mysterious things happening right now that there's no official explanation to. This is I personally have lost thousands of followers along with many other individuals. What's happening here? Are bots being cleared up? Is evidence being destroyed? Is important information being hidden away from the general public? Is there a cover-up of some nefarious CD behavior by this big tech social media giant that of course has been abusing their power to punish people for political expression and ideas? Well, most likely. That's, that's probably what's happening right now as of course someone posted this picture right now of twitter headquarters highlighted with of course undercover fed boys at the server rooms this as of course the latest news is controversial to some including many twitter employees that plan to of course quit and be laid off as of course the disclosure that came out from the preliminary hearings between elon musk and twitter highlighted that elon musk is looking to bring back people on the a platform that have been discriminated against their political viewpoints is talking about opening up the algorithms and is talking about a revolutionary idea that originally made the internet that great and that of course is allowing people to actually see what they want to see if you decide to follow someone if you decide to subscribe to someone you will actually get to see what they post not an algorithm deciding what is best for you these are the planned changes that elon musk openly talked about and that, of course, many people also found out about through his private text messages that were released through recent disclosures. And because of that, Twitter employees are, for some reason or another, freaking out and going crazy. Along, of course, with the corporate media that are panicking and writing how they are afraid of Elon Musk allowing people to, to have a voice and to be able to discuss their political differences civilly without anyone being censored or, or having their opinions silenced for political wrong think. And this insanity highlights what I think a lot of people in the establishment are afraid of. And that, of course, is transparency, accountability, and the free flow of information that truly is what has been correlated with the progression and growth of human civilization. And truly, what really evil people fear is people finding out how truly evil they are. And only with free speech, only with the ability to be able to freely criticize, critique, and have an honest and real conversation, only then could real change come to a society, a change that many powerful, corrupted people are afraid of. Twitter, along with other big tech social media companies, have been the gatekeepers of information for the general public for their own sinister purposes of power and influence, which they have been granting their buddies and friends in the current establishment. We know this perfectly as it was represented by the Hunter Biden laptops story that was censored by Facebook, by Twitter, and many other big tech social media giants that 
according to many polls, affected the election so the current president of the United States would win. As many Americans said, if they found out about this controversy, they would have voted in a different way, essentially allowing the intelligence agencies along with big tech social media to codify the elections for the current administration in charge as the FBI was going around big tech social media platforms as even admitted to by Mark Zuckerberg telling him that certain stories that were not favorable for the Democratic establishment were, quote, disinformation and dangerous and should have been suppressed. And as we're also finding out recently from Tony Bobolinsky with his latest bombshell interview on Tucker Carlson last night, that he went to the FBI with receipts, documents, metadata, highlighting specifically clear corruption, clear illegal activities by Biden and his family members, which the FBI said that they would take seriously and investigate. They didn't. And they knew. They had all the evidence. They had all the emails that confirmed the laptop story was true from specifically Tony Bobolinsky. And they still decided to run a massive cover-up effort that, of course, codified the elections for the current corrupted businessman, career politician, and his sons that have been using their seat of power that is supposed to be representing the people of America to personally enrich and empower themselves. Clear injustice that is most likely going to be continuing for a while as of course Al Sharpton recently came out and said that Joe Biden told him personally that he will be running for the presidency in 2024. How else will the FBI get involved in this upcoming election? What will they do to Twitter? What will they do to Elon Musk to make sure that their president, that their guy gets into power? Well, that's a question that I think a lot of people should be asking themselves and taking very seriously, which of course we're going to be doing specifically on LukeUncensored.com later on today with another exclusive video only available for members. In yesterday's TimCast IRL podcast, I was wearing this t-shirt and I explained it twice, but people still don't understand. They're like, hey, how do I get this t-shirt? I don't see it on your store because it's not. This t-shirt is only available for members of LukeUncensored.com as a perk. It is available to you at cost if you are a member. Barely any profit to us. The store we use make, makes us take a profit. We take like a 25 cent profit just because we have to, but you are essentially getting the shirt at cost of production at an extremely reduced rate along with other exclusive shirts that you could only get as a member of LukeUncensored.com. You sign up as a member and then of course you get access to the website. Access on the website gives you a lot of incredible things including the store that saves you money and allows you to get rare clothing items that no one else could get unless they're members of LukeUnsensored.com. You also get access to a forum where you get to meet like-minded individuals. You get three master classes that, of course, you have homework with that you could take officially, training you on some very important aspects and things in life. And you also get exclusive videos this video is available for you right now on many crazy topics, specifically only on LukeUncensored.com. Right now, you can click the link down in the description below. It's just 50 cents a day. Signing up is very quick. It's very easy. And it gives you access to everything that we have available for you. If you haven't signed up yet, what are you waiting for? Click the link down in the description below and sign up right now. So, of course, we're still not done in the making of this video as there is just more extraordinary crazy news happening in the world right now. And I think one of the biggest stories is of course OPEC just announcing that they are going to be cutting the production of oil on the world market to the tune of 2 million barrels a day. This of course will have huge large ramifications for the energy crisis that many people are already dealing with in this world, especially in some of the poorest places in the world like Bangladesh that literally had their entire power grid just go down. The infrastructure is, is crap. Their politicians have been prioritizing the whims and wishes of the World Economic Forum that has been cheering them on for gender equity, while of course the government there can't even get power to its citizenry and it's becoming more and more expensive and you could bet that energy, that power is going to become even a lot more expensive with this latest news from OPEC, which will directly benefit oil producing countries that, of course, will be making more of a profit. If you remember, Joe Biden said, oh, yeah, we're going to get Saudi Arabia and the Middle East to produce more oil. Well, th th they just came back and just slapped Joe Biden upside the face and said, no, we're absolutely not. We're actually going to produce less oil 
which you're going to have to pay for more as you implement policies here in the United States stopping domestic oil exploration and production. Yes, you heard that correctly. All in the name of green energy, all in the name of changing the weather and climate, the Biden administration stopped a large portion of domestic energy production and exploration and now is dependent on Saudi Arabia, which ships their oil, their energy across to us, wasting more energy, expanding more gases into the atmosphere, all in the name of green policies that this administration is patting themselves on the back of. Sick sociopathic policies that do the opposite of what they promised to do. This as of course human progress is correlated with the amount of energy that is available to them. With this deliberate cutting down of energy to the general public, who's going to suffer the most? Who's going to pay the most consequences for this? Well, of course, the poorest people in the world that, of course, are going to be screwed, that are going to find it more and more difficult to make sure that they could even live in our current society that is becoming more and more expensive to do so in. It is the failed domestic and international policies of this administration that has led us to this catastrophic situation that I believe is deliberate and a part of a great reset agenda that, of course, this administration has been touting and pushing for. All of this, as of course the Biden administration has been releasing their oil reserves, which now has reached one of its lowest points within the last few decades, leaving essentially the country to be screwed. Who's responsible for this larger energy policy that's dependent on Saudi Arabia? Well, it's also important to note no one else than of course Henry Kissinger himself, who also, along with David Rockefeller and, of course, Richard Nixon, helped open up China to the rest of the world, outsourcing many of our blue-collar jobs for slave labor in exchange for, of course, cheap goods brought to us by, of course, multinational corporations that this man essentially serves. He has also just come out and made a statement today saying that China might actually recalibrate their situation and foreign policy with Russia after what he calls a miscalculation on their part, saying essentially that China gave Russia a blank check thinking that Russia was going to win the war in Ukraine, that their invasion was going to be successful. Kissinger is now coming out and saying China is thinking twice specifically because, quote, they want to avoid a, quote, wall of Western opposition that similarly developed against Russia. Now, it's also important to note here that the American economy is interlinked with the Chinese economy and we depend on one another. One creates cheap goods, another one buys the cheap goods, and if the cheap goods and products stop being delivered, this of course will signal some larger problems for the United States. And so far, the United States has had a very soft-handed approach towards China geopolitically while of course focusing more of its efforts against Russia. Will China be swayed by this as Henry Kissinger prophesies as well? I don't know. I don't believe anything Henry Kissinger says and everything he says should be met with criticism and of course skepticism as he is a known pathological liar that has led to the misery and suffering and murder of countless numbers of innocent human beings on the face of this earth. Whether it's Laos, Chile, Vietnam, Sudan, the Middle East, you name it. This man has had his pop in creating the current world that we're dealing with, and this is why everything he says should be met with skepticism. Now, if one thing is clear, that the current situation in Ukraine between Russia and the United States is escalating to the point where almost every single personal and financial interest in the world are at risk here, as of course, the United States foreign policy essentially is playing nuclear chicken with a nuclear power. And Caitlin Johnston wrote a very interesting piece that was titled, quote, we survived the last nuclear standoff through compromise and de-escalation, where she details specific historical elements during the Cold War that brought us an end to the tensions, that brought us towards a situation for the well-being of everyone preventing a nuclear war mainly because of compromise and sincere commitments to de-escalations, which prevented a full all-out global war. A concept and an idea that, of course, is far gone today in a world where we only have escalation, we only have the larger push to expand and grow this conflict, while most Americans have forgotten about detente or don't even remember what it was. And I think it's fair to say we have the complete opposite of detente right now, as just moments ago, 
the Polish president announced that he wants U.S. leaders to put their nuclear weapons in Polish territory. The new prime minister, a very hawkish individual of the United Kingdom, announced that Ukraine will win this upcoming proxy war. This as Ukraine has just expelled the Iranian ambassador from its country, as of course Iran has just supplied Russia with unmanned explosive drones, which we're hearing Russia just used in Kiev to go after energy infrastructure in that country. The Russians are also announcing a decree that the nuclear power plant inside of Ukraine is now somehow theirs. This says escalation is being met with more escalation and the thing that led us away from the brink of the entire collapse of human civilization in the 1960s is sadly being forgotten about. And I think more than ever, we should resurface those larger ideas of, of peace deals, negotiations, compromise, detente, easing tensions, because the current strategy right now is is, is, is not one. What, what's the strategy? Nuclear chicken? What's, what's phase two? What's phase three? We don't have any. Someone, please, if you are someone that, that believes in the official story, if you are someone that, that watches the corporate media, what's the official strategy here? Because I haven't seen one outlined. I haven't seen the plan. And as of right now, I do not see things going very favorably for humanity with the progression that we are on. If you agree with this sentiment and with this statement, share this video with your friends and family members. It is more imperative than ever, especially in these new algorithms that of course prevent people's voices from being heard at the whims of unaccountable billionaires who of course get to control what people think as of now. Will that change? I hope so. Let's start that conversation down in the description below. If you thought I got anything wrong, please let me know. A lot of this was my own opinions, my own perspectives, my own uh, understanding of the world. You have a different one. Let me know if you thought I got anything wrong. And if you think I need to see any other evidence to convince me that one of my opinions or expressed ideas here was wrong. I love constructive criticism. I wouldn't be here if it wasn't for you guys. And this is why I love you guys. Stay tuned for more on wearechange.org. One more video available for you right now on LukeUncensored.com. See you there.